Jamie Cat Prep. How to approach research based passion. By Loriano Andrade Vicente and Jamie the Scientific Fat. And our website is jamiethefat.com. So let me start by giving you an introduction about myself. I scored in the 97th percentile on the 2016-2017 MCAT. And particularly, I scored in the 100th percentile for biology and biochemistry. And this is the method that I'm about to show you is the method that I used. And this is a method that I created, and I think it's it was vital to my success in, in, on my MCAT. This method is really simple. It just breaks down the passage into the scientific method, and it is something that I use for biology and biochemistry as well as psychology and sociology. I don't think it's necessary to use this in chemistry and physics because the chemistry and physics is more straightforward, I believe, in terms of you know scientific method and research-based passages, and I didn't use it myself. Maybe I use it for one or two passages, but not really. I usually just read the passage and did the questions for chemistry and physics. But again, this, this method I thought was vital, absolutely vital. Once you know the content, this method will bring you to the top. And without further ado, we shall begin breaking down the passage it literally is this method is literally what we're doing we're breaking down the passage so the first thing you want to do when you get to your exam um, if you when you're about before you start your biology and biochemistry you want to start writing these in these are our passage outlines basically we're basically breaking down and breaking down the passage into the scientific method and just in case you don't know what the scientific method is it's question hypothesis study design Data, data collection, data analysis, and conclusion. Okay, and So what we're doing is we're breaking down the passage into that. So we have study one. There's usually more than one study, so you might have to do this more than once. But if there's a second study that is quite related to the first, but just has some nuance associated with it, you might want to just make a note of that in, in our passage, in your first passage outline, rather than making another one. But okay, this first line, what is the study trying to prove? That's usually in the first line of the passage. And you really want to write that down. You really need to understand what we're trying to prove. Otherwise, the rest of the stuff's not going to make any sense to you. So independent variable, dependent variable. The independent variable is a variable that is predicted to have a causal effect. The independent variable is a variable that the researcher controlled and manipulates in an experimental setting. Okay. And there's usually multiple independent variables. But we usually only change, well, definitely, all the time, we only change one independent variable and then we measure the effect on the dependent variable. That's the only way you can do it. Um, the dependent variable is the variable that is hypothesized to depend on the independent variable and is what the researchers measure. We change the independent variable and we measure the effect on the dependent variable. And that was just the primer, just in case you don't know what those things are, even though you should know what those things are, but, okay. So here we write our independent variable here we write an independent variable, here we write a dependent variable that we find, and we have sample. This is not too important for biology and biochemistry, but it becomes very important for psych -soc. Why? Well, sample size, sample population, and the types of people within the sample uh, are a source of confounding, confounding variables and, and bias and all types of errors that can arise in a study and helps you in your determination of whether something is causal or if it's um, related to or if there's some problem there. You want to write down, you want to note the sample. Okay, that's, but that's really more important in psychology and sociology. And then the conclusion. This is vital. This conclusion is vital. You need to make a conclusion about the study that you're looking at before you can move on to the questions. Usually the conclusion will have to be made from the figures that are given in the passage. Not always, but most of the time you have to make a conclusion from the figure that is given to you within the passage. Again, that is vital. And now we will get into an example and you'll see this put to work in action, okay? So what you usually wanna do is you wanna read the passage and you wanna fill out your outline as you go. So that's what I'll do. Passage two. The human intestinal tract is inhabited by a diverse assortment of microorganisms known as gut microbiota. These microbial populations are increasingly implicated in the regulation of host metabolism and the development of obesity and diabetes. The catabolism of dietary fiber by gut microbiota results in the production of short-chain fatty acids such as butyrate and acetate, which are important energy sources for the host. Short-chain fatty acids also act as signaling molecules. 
with the ability to bind and activate GPCRs, what I'm underlying is something that I would probably highlight in, in when I'm taking the passage or when I'm taking the actual exam. The G protein coupled receptor GPCR43 is expressed in white adipose tissue and is not expressed in muscle or liver. Research has generated GPCR43 deficient or GPCR43 knockout mice to analyze the contribution of GPCR43 43 to energy regulation. Wild type and GPCR43 mice were fed a standard diet or a high fat diet and their body weight in grams was measured weekly for 16 weeks and then we look at figure one. So here's where I'd stop and I'd say, hold on, let me break down this passage. Okay, so the first thing, what's this study about? Researchers generated GPCR43 in mice to analyze to analyze the contribution of GPCR43 to energy regulation. That's what this study is about, okay? It's about whether or not GPCR43 is in some way related to energy regulation, okay? So what are the independent variables? Well, one thing is genes. The other thing is diet. That's what we see. We see wild type or GPCR43 knockout. And we see standard diet or high fat diet. So those are the independent variables. And then you want to further break that down into wild type, knockout, standard, high fat diet. Because oftentimes uh, a passage a passage question will ask you, well, what's the controls? Well, wild type's obviously the control, and standard diet's obviously a control. And then these are experimental groups. So like, yep, experimental. And what's what's a dependent variable? Some of you might say, well, it's weight in grams. And in one sense it is, in one sense it isn't. Um, we're actually in this in this passage, we're operationalizing energy regulation by body weight. So what's operationalization? Operationali opera operationalizing something is when you want to measure a true value, a true, uh, true value, but you can't, you measure something else as a correlate to that true value. And in this case, we're using body weight as a correlate to energy regulation. All right, so that's kind of a nuance though, and you might be able to get away with calling the dependent variable body weight, but it's really about energy regulation, okay? So now we wanna make a conclusion by looking at the figure. So again, when you're ever trying to look at a figure, first you look at the axis. You look at the x-axis, you have to look at the y-axis. Normally, the x-axis is the independent variable and the y-axis is the dependent variable. That's the convention, okay? That's the convention for the scientific method that we put the independent variable on the x-axis and the dependent variable on the y-axis. Now, whenever you're looking at figures, graphs, tables, you always want to look at the wild type first, okay? You want to look at the wild type first because you need to know what normal looks like. So let's look at wild type on a standard diet. Where is it? That, this guy is right here. The wild type on a standard diet is the lowest on the graph. Now we want to compare that, changing only one independent variable. See, because there's, we can change the independent variable from wild type standard to wild type high fat diet and see what happens. Or we can compare it to wild type and GPCR43 knockout on a standard diet. We can't compare wild type standard diet to GPCR43 on a high fat diet because we don't know which, which one of the independent variables are having the causal effect on that change of the, on the dependent variable. It could be the high fat diet or it could be the gene knockout. So we want to compare the wild type standard diet to the GPCR43 knockout on a standard diet. And what do we see? The GPCR43 knockout on a standard diet is slightly heavier than the wild type. Okay, but there's not a big difference here. There's, you know, there's a difference here. There's certainly a difference here, but it might not be a significant difference. So let's keep going. Let's look at the wild type on the high fat diet, right? And he's right here. And let's compare that to then wild type, I mean the GPCR43 knockout mouse mice on a, on a high fat diet and he's way up here okay he is fat he is heavy all right and that's a significant difference and we can make a conclusion from this figure the conclusion would be bang when we knock out gpcr 43 we gain weight and that's from figure one so that means then because that's a correlate to energy regulation gpcr 43 is involved in energy regulation all right and that's that's our conclusion so now we can move on study two well, let's move on to the next part of the passage. Next, researchers examine the relationship between GPCR43 function and insulin sensitivity. Adipocytes from wild type and GPCR43 knockout white adipose tissue cells were incubated in the presence or absence of both insulin and acetate. And here we have figure two. So what's the point? Well, the point is, is GPCR43 function related to insulin? That's, that's the point. And what are the independent variables? Well, it's still genes. The sample is mice, white adipose tissue. 
Um, diet actually shouldn't be here. I accidentally put this in by mistake, and it shouldn't be here. But it's still genes, it's wild type and knockout. And we also have now insulin and acid as independent variables. Again, the independent variable is a variable predicted to have a causal effect. We manipulate the independent variable and we measure the effect on the dependent variable. So what are what is the dependent variable? Well, it's TPCR43 function, and that's operationalized by glucose uptake. Okay, again, obviously the dependent variable is also glucose uptake, but it's really about GPCR43 function. That's another thing that gets people confused is that they need to make that connection. You need to make that connection that it's not really just about glucose uptake, it's about the T protein couple receptor 43 function. That's what all of this is about. All right, so let's look at figure two and try to make a conclusion. Figure two, uptake of radioactive glucose in wild type and GPCR43 adipocytes in the presence or absence of both insulin and acetate. Note, star indicates P is less than 0.05. And let me just be clear about something because maybe you guys don't know what this means. When you see something like this, TPCR43, um, negative, negative. So this right here is the gene in question. This is, the, this is another convention that you need to be familiar with. This negative sign right here and this negative sign right here refer to the presence or absence of a gene. If you see a positive sign there, that means the gene is present. If you see a negative sign there, that means the gene is absent. Why are there two negative signs? Well, we have two copies of each gene. Remember that we inherit one chromosome from our mother and one chromosome from our father. So we have two copies of each gene. And we can knock out one of those genes, we can knock out two of those genes, or we can have both of them present. If both of them are present, they would be called a wild type. Okay? If both of them if one of them is present, one of them is knocked out, it would look like this. Okay, you have a positive and negative. Okay? So that's convention, just in case you didn't know what that meant. So now let's deal with this figure. Actually, let me erase that space that I don't have. So Again, you always want to look at x-axis and y-axis. On the x-axis, what do we have? We have the genes in question, wild type, GPCR43 knockout. And on the y-axis, we have radioactive glucose uptake in millimoles. And also on the x-axis, I should have told you this earlier, we have insulin and acetate. All right. So we, what, again, the independent variable is insulin, acetate, and genes. So when we look at this graph, we have to make sure we're only looking at where when we're looking at two different mice cells, that we're looking at something that had the same distribution of insulin and acetate, and that only one variable is changing. Otherwise, we, you know, we're making a comparison that it's not going to tell us any information at all. Okay, so let's deal. With, let's deal with the wild type first. Always, we look at the wild type first, and then we can compare it to different uh, settings. So let's look at wild type with insulin and acetate knocked out. Oh, well, insulin and acetate is not knocked out. Well, it's not added. If they're the negative here, it means it's not added. If they're the positive, it means it's been added. So insulin and acetate, this is our baseline right here. This is baseline. Okay? And then we can compare that to GPCR43 knockout in the same distribution of insulin and acetate because otherwise, we're making a comparison that we can't conclude any causal influences because there's two things changing, and how can you conclude from two things changing which one's actually doing the changing? So nothing happens. There's no difference between the wild type and the knockout when there's no insulin and no acetate added. Let's keep going. Let's look at wild type with acetate added. All right, baseline still, hasn't changed. And let's compare that GPCR43 knockout with only acetate added, right here. Again, baseline, no change. Now we're gonna look at wild type with insulin added only, this guy right here. And what do we see? Insulin, I mean, glucose uptake has gone way up. Okay, up, up, up way up. And now we compare that to GPCR43 knockout with the same distribution of insulin and acetate. Okay? And we see that it's the same height. So there's no significant difference between this guy right here and this guy right here. But we want to continue now. We want to move over to the right and we want to compare the wild type plus plus with a wild type with insulin and acetate added to the GPCR43 knockout with insulin and acetate added. And what do we see? There's a difference here. There is certainly a difference between this guy and this guy. Um, when you add, in the wild type, when you add acetate in the presence of insulin, insulin, I mean, uh, glucose uptake goes way down. 
But when you do it in the absence of GPCR43 knockout, insulin, I mean, glucose uptake is way up again. That's telling you that acetate, insulin, and GPCR43 is related. But we also need to look at these two right here. We need to look at these two. We need to compare the wild type with and without acetate added. When you add come when you have when you add insulin to the wild type in the presence of in the absence of acetate, this is what we get, this pillar. And insulin and glucose uptake goes way up. And comparing let me make some space. So let's, 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 so when you compare these two, when you compare this guy with this guy, you see that in the presence of insulin without acetate, glucose uptake is up. Okay, but when you add acetate, glucose uptake goes way down. What does that tell you? That tells you that acetate is acting as an inhibitor to glucose uptake. But with just that information alone, we cannot say that it's g porcine coupled receptor 43 function that it, acetate is affecting. But when we look at this guy right here to this guy, excuse me, when we look at this guy right here to this guy right here, we can conclude for a fact that acetate is affecting G protein coupled receptor 43 function. And that's what I concluded. I said insulin increases GPCR 43 function in the absence of acetate. And that's from figure two. Because again, when we look at this two, when we look at these two guys, um, there's a big difference here. There's a significant difference here, and that means that there's something going on there. Insulin is being affected by acetate in some way, and it's affecting insulin's ability to increase glucose uptake. But how do we know that CPCR43 function involved? Well, we look at the between these two, okay? We note that when GPCR43 knockout is gone, that phenotype of decreased glucose uptake is disappeared. It's no longer there. All right, and so that's how you come to that kind of conclusion. Now we can work with the questions. And again, this is something that you would do on a normal passage. This is actually a very difficult passage. So if you're lost here, I'm sorry, but I guess I picked too hard of a passage to do a, a, a video on, but this also might be helpful to you, more helpful than if I picked an easy passage. And again, some passages are gonna take longer than, than others. This passage takes a lot of thinking and the questions actually are very difficult too, but I'm gonna work through them with you. But again, this is what you would actually do. All right, so let's get to the questions. Which table show the expected body weight? This is question seven. Which table shows the expected body weight of, G, of wild type and G protein coupled receptor 43 knockout mice fed a high fat diet while housed for 16 weeks in a conventional condition or a germ free condition where the gut does not become colonized? That's actually very important to the question. So, what do we read? From passage two, we read that um, the gut microbiota will metabolize metabolize dietary fiber into short chain fatty acids like butyrate and acetate which act as signaling molecules with the ability to bind and activate gpcr receptors okay they activate gpr receptors gpcr receptors well you know what you know what's a gpcr 43 gpcr g protein coupled receptor gpcr 43 all right and when you knock gpcr 43 out that we concluded from study one we gain weight so you know what we expect then that just without any other information, let's look at, we expect that if we knock out GPCR43 function, we gain we gain weight. So if we have GPCR43 function, we're stable weight where you, or we lose weight. So first thing, when you want to look for answers here, you want to first look at the conventional. Wild type conventional, that's the normal condition. Remember, we always look at baseline conditions. And we want to compare that to GPCR knockout, okay, in conventional conditions. And we already know what to expect for the distribution for the for those conditions, all right? And we know for a fact, okay, we already determined from this graph right here, from figure one, that if you knock out G protein coupled receptor 43, you're supposed to be fat. So any question that's saying that the GPCR 43 knockout and the wild type are the same weight is just wrong. So A is canceled out, and you know what, D is canceled out too because it's trying to say that the wild type is heavier than the GPCR43 knockout under conventional conditions. No, that's the opposite of what we concluded. So no and no. So between B and C, how do we make this? Now we have to look at the germ-free. Now the germ-free matters to us. So in, in, in germ-free conditions, what happens? There's no gut microbiota anymore. 
You know what? You know what that means? There's no more agonist. There's no more ligand that's activating TPCR43. So you know what? Wild type under germ-free conditions is going to be fat. Okay? So under germ-free conditions, the wild type is going to be fat. Fatter than the conventional conditions. And that's because, again, we knocked out we've we've knocked out the critters, the gut microbiota that are making ligands for TPCR43. If there's no ligand, you're going to gain weight. It's almost like you don't have it. But what about the knockout cells? How do we dis how do we discriminate between between the knockouts? Well, obviously we already know the answer is B because C doesn't even give you the opportunity to say that germ free is fatter, but what about the knockout? Why is the knockout distribution the same? Why haven't it changed? Well, if you don't have the receptor to begin with, the presence or absence of the ligand is absolutely irrelevant to 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 changing weight. So again, the answer is B. And again, you see how we got that we we had to use our conclusion from our figure to to answer this question. If you hadn't made a conclusion from the figure, you would just be guessing. All right, question eight: Which amino acid least likely found in one of the transmembrane domains of GPCR forty three? This is just essentially a discrete question. A transmembrane domain is found in the phospholipid bilayer. The phospholipid bilayer is filled with lipids. Lipids are hydrophobic. The only amino acid that is not hydrophobic in this list is aspartate. Aspartate has a uh, moiety that looks like this. Okay. It's an R. So that's that's not going to work. Is it? Does it look? No, it's longer than that, actually. It's like this. But again, that's not going to work. All right, question nine. Compared to wild type mice, which experimental group of mice is most likely to remain lean when fed a high fat diet? Okay, compared to wild type mice, question nine. Which experimental group of mice is most likely to remain lean when fed a high fat diet? Again, this is from study one. This is from our conclusion. We said that when we knock out GPCR43, we gain weight. So if we were to choose between these mice that are treated with antibiotic, we want to choose something that has GPCR43 function. Because GPCR43 function keeps us lean. So if we have, between all these choices, mice treated with antibiotics, well, that would make them fat. Because you'd kill all the gut microbiota, you wouldn't have any more agonists for GPCR43, you'd get fat. Mice treated with GPCR43 antagonist will get fat again for the same reason. If you have an antagonist, you can't you can't affect you can't activate GPCR43 signaling and you'll get fat. Mice in which GPCR43 is overexpressed in white adipose tissue. Yes, you know what? Because that makes us lean, and we concluded that from study one from our conclusion. And this no, because this again this is just like this, just like that guy. So anyway, question 10. Which conclusion about glucose uptake is best supported by the data in figure 2? Well, we already made a conclusion about that, didn't we? When we, insulin will increase GPCR43 function in the absence of aspartate. And we were actually very, you know, we didn't make too hard of a conclusion there just to be careful. But really, um, what's, the, what's the answer? Let's go through the answer choices. Acetate suppresses insulin-mediated glucose uptake in white and wild-type adipocytes, but not GPCR43 adipocytes. Yep, that's our answer. And again, I'll go through it again because I'm sure you want to see it. Look, right here. When we compare insulin without acetate, glucose uptake way up, right? But when we add acetate, way down. Now, when we compare this guy right here to this guy right here, GPC-43 knockout with the presence of insulin and acetate, what happens? Glucose uptake is way up. That tells you that acetate is binding to or affecting GPC-43 function in some way. And that's why the answer is A. Question 11. Insulin signaling results in the phosphorylation of downstream, downstream target AKT, or protein kinase B, is also known as, which can be quantified by Western blot analysis. Which graphic shows the effect of acetate administration will likely have on AKT phosphorylation levels in white adipose tissue and muscles of wild type mice. Well, again, we made a conclusion, right? We said from study two, this is about study two again, we concluded that insulin 
will increase the PCR43 function in the absence of acetate. And my computer is lagging. Which is really irritating because So again, we concluded from, from study two that insulin will increase the PCR43 function in the absence of acetate. So we should be looking then, we should, first off, we should be looking at white adipose tissue first because that's what we're familiar with. And we know in white adipose tissue, we express CPCR43. And we want to look for something that had the distribution that is in agreement with study two. So let's just, let's just choose one. Let's just choose choice A and look at it. Insulin, when there's no insulin, no acetate, we, this is baseline, okay? But when we add insulin and acetate, it doesn't decrease, and it should, because we concluded that acetate is an inhibitor of DPCR43 in some way, and, and it inhibits the effect that insulin has on DPCR43. So A is out, and anything that looks like A is out. So C is out. What about B and D? How do we differentiate between those two? Because, look, B has the distribution that we expect. This is baseline. Okay, insulin uptake is high, but when we add acetate, it, it decreases because acetate is an inhibitor of DPCR43, like we concluded from study two. And that makes sense. This is good. But question D also has that. So now we have to look at muscle. And we have to ask ourselves, what is different about muscle tissue than white adipose tissue? Well, again, if you have a different tissue, they're going to have a differential expression of receptors, differential expression of proteins, okay? And in the passage, it told us that GPCR43 is not expressed in muscle or liver. So adding insulin, adding acetate should have absolutely no effect at, at the muscle cells because there's no receptor present, like we said before. So again, the answer is choice B, because in choice D, there is an effect when there shouldn't be because GPCR43 receptor is not present in muscle cells. So bang. All right, question 12. Compared to untreated wild-type mice, antibiotic treatment of wild-type mice is likely to result in, and I accidentally give you the answer. The answer is choice C, increased volume of herbicides. But you probably want to know why. Antibiotics will kill the gut microbiota in your, in your intestine. The gut microbiota are, are a source of GPCR ligands like butyrate and acetate. Butyrate. Yeah, like butyrate and acetate. And butyrate is an agonist to to a uh, GPCR43. So if you knock out the ligands, you're going to get fat. It's almost like not having a receptor. So the answer is choice C. And that's pretty much it. You, wanna, you want to use this method whenever you have a passage on biology, biochemistry, psychology, or sociology. This is the, the method that I use, and this is the method that works for me, and I hope that it works for you. And I hope that you use it. Some of you think you might not have enough time. And I personally think that you don't have enough time because you don't know the content enough or you don't know the scientific method well enough. And again, I have a whole lecture on the scientific method that you can view. All you have to do is contact me and I will surely send it to you. And hopefully it's helpful. But again, if you don't know the content, this is going to be difficult for you. And if you don't understand the scientific method, this is going to be difficult for you. If you're still questioning, well, what's an independent variable? I don't really understand what that is. You can't, you cannot expect to do well on the MCAT if you don't know those things. So you need to practice that. You need to learn that. And I think one of the best ways to do that is to listen to my lecture on the scientific method. Just contact me for it. I'll give it to you. So again, if you have any questions, contact me at loriano.andrade at chewing scientific fat or chewing the sfat.com. Or you can like us on Facebook. You can contact me on Facebook. You can contact me through social media, any of the social medias out there. Um, I'm on Instagram at tier one lala. And um, good luck on your MCAT. I hope you do well.